Like carbohydrates, proteins and fats, water soluble vitamins are also essential to us in an incredible variety of different ways for human being. Students, in this episode, I, Dr. C. Anita, will get you introduced to thiamine, a water soluble vitamin. We shall start with getting introduced to thiamine. Thiamine, also known as thiamine or vitamin B1, is one of the B vitamins, a group of chemically distinct water soluble vitamin that also includes riboflavin, niacin, pantothenic acid, pyridoxin, biotin, folic acid, and others. It is a vitamin found in food and used as a dietary supplement. It is a colorless compound with chemical formula C12, H17, N4, O, yes. Thiamine's chemical structure contains a bridimin ring and a thiazole ring. It is soluble in water and insoluble in alcohol. Since it is water soluble, thiamine cannot be stored in the body. However, once absorbed, the vitamin is concentrated in muscle tissue. After studying this episode, you will be able to understand the discovery of thiamine, describe the structure and its chemical nature, identify the food sources, describe the distribution and absorption, explain the metabolism and transport of thiamine. Now you will find a comprehensive review on the discovery of thiamine. Thiamine is in the B complex family. Thiamine was the first of the water soluble vitamins to be described leading to the discovery of more such trace compounds essential for survival and to the notion of vitamin. A surgeon general in the Japanese Navy, Kanzairo Takak in 1884 rejected the previous germ theory for beriberi and hypothesized that the disease was due to insufficiency in the diet instead. He demonstrated that substituting a diet of white rice only with barley, meat, milk, bread and vegetables nearly eliminated beriberi on a 9 month sea voyage. Later in 1905 he discovered the antiberiberi factor in rice bran that is removed by polishing into white rice and in brown barley rice and was affectionately called as barley baron. The specific connection to grain was made in 1897 by Christian Ejekman, a military doctor in the Dutch Indies, discovered that fowl fed on a diet of cooked polished rice developed paralysis, which could be reversed by discontinuing rice polishing. He was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physiology and Medicine for his observations that led to the discovery of this vitamins. Grit Grigens in 1901 interpreted the connection between excessive consumption of polished rice and beriberi and concluded that rice contains an essential nutrient in the outer layers of the grain that is removed by polishing. In 1911, Kashmir Funk isolated the antinutric substance from rice bran that he called a vitamin. Later, in the year 1926, it was isolated from rice by Jensen and Donath in Java. However, the synthesis and the nature of this vitamin was accomplished in the year 1936 by Dr. R.R. R. Williams. He also coined the name for it, thiamine, for the presence of sulfur in the molecule. There are four known natural thiamine. Thiamine phosphate derivatives, thiamine monophosphate, thiamine diphosphate, thiamine triphosphate, and the recently discovered adenine thiamine triphosphate. Lohmann and Stifter in 1937 demonstrated that the diphosphorylated thiamine derivative was a cofactor required for the oxidative decarboxylation of pyruvate. The structure shown consists of an amino pyrimidine and a thiazole ring linked by a methylene bridge. The thiazole is substituted with methyl and hydroxyethyl side chains. Here, two inorganic phosphate groups are introduced into the thiazole ring 
We now move on to the chemistry and physiology of thiamine. Chemistry and characteristics. Thiamine is available commercially as thiamine hydrochloride. This is a crystalline white or colorless organosulfur compound with a chemical formula C12H17N4OS. Thiamine has slight yeast like odor and salty taste. It is readily soluble in water. Moisture destroys it rapidly and hence it is more liable to heat in fresh than in dry foods. The vitamin is stable in dry form also when heated at 120 degree centigrade in acidic medium but is unstable in alkaline solutions. However, when foods are cooked in neutral or in alkaline medium, thiamine gets destroyed. It is unstable when exposed to ultraviolet light and gamma radiation. Thiamine reacts strongly in Maillard type reactions. Physiology of thiamine. Thiamine that is ingested in food is available in both free and bound form as thiamine pyrophosphate or in a protein phosphate complex. The bound forms are split in the digestive tract after which absorption takes place from the duodenum. Thiamine is not stored in the body. The organs such as liver, kidney, brain and muscle will have slightly higher concentration than the blood. Functioning form of thiamine is thiamine pyrophosphate. Conversion of thiamine to this form which is active requires ATP. Thiamine pyrophosphate acts as a coenzyme for many important enzyme systems. Excess thiamine gets excreted in the urine. Thiaminase is an enzyme present in uncooked fishes and shrimp that splits the thiamine molecule thereby inactivating it. However, cooking inactivates thiaminase. Tea also contain compounds that act as thiamine antagonists. People who are accustomed to drink more tea may have a deficiency of thiamine. Food sources of thiamine. Dietary sources. Thiamine is widely distributed in many foods but most of the foods contain only low concentration. The richest sources of thiamine include brewers yeast and wheat germ. However, these are not taken in a daily dietary. Liver, meat, pork and organ meat are also rich source of thiamine. Dry bean, peas, soya bean, peanuts are excellent source. Egg is a fair source and more so the thiamine found only in yolk. Vegetables and fruits are not good sources. Milk and its products are also not good source of thiamine. Considerable amount is lost when vegetables are cooked and excess water is thrown. The loss of thiamine in the cooking of daily mixed diet is about 25%. Cooking losses vary depending on cooking time, pH, temperature, quantity of water used and discarded and type of water used for cooking. Modern process forms like freezing, canning and dehydrating foods may result in only small losses. Thiamine is very unevenly distributed in the kernel of whole grain. The aluren, layer and germ are much richer than the endosperm. The scatulum, constituting only 1.5% of the weight of the whole kernel, is richest of all and usually contains 15-60% to of all thiamine in the kernel. Therefore, milling to degerminate grain yields a product of substantially reduced thiamine content. In highly milled flour, only about 70% of the grain is included and the thiamine content of such a flour is about 0.13 mg per 100 gram as compared to flour of 80-85% to extraction which contains 0.32 mg per 100 gram. Rice in the brown form has a lower thiamine content that is 0.33 mg per 100 grams than the best whole wheat. In highly milled white rice about 0.08 mg per 100 gram remains and this may be further reduced by half by washing the rice before cooking. In hand pounded rice thiamine content is 0.16 mg per 100 gram. Pulses contain about 0.40 to 0.80 mg thiamine per 100 gram. Fresh potatoes contain 0.10 mg of thiamine per 100 gram. 
cow's milk contains about 0.04 milligrams of thiamine per 100 gram but as it is 87% water it is among the thiamine rich foods on a dry weight basis pasteurization of milk destroys about 10% of the thiamine human milk contains on an average as much as thiamine as cow's milk in conclusion nearly all living tissues contain thiamine and some amount of thiamine is therefore derived from almost all foods it is only with the refined cereals that is white flour white rice degerminated maize meal cereal starches and sago as well as in products made from them that the thiamine content is too low to support human life the distribution absorption and metabolism of thiamine distribution and absorption thiamine is readily released from the food materials and absorbed provided hydrochloric acid production in the stomach is normal thiamine is absorbed from the proximal small intestine by active transport and passive diffusion the uptake of thiamine by the mucosal cell is likely coupled in some way to its phosphorylation or dephosphorylation thiamine is released by the action of phosphatase and pyrophosphatase in the upper small intestine at low concentrations the process is carrier mediated and at high concentrations absorption occurs via passive diffusion active transport is greatest in the jejunum and ileum but active transport can be inhibited by alcohol consumption and by folic deficiency most of thiamine present in the intestine is in the pyrophosphorylated form thiamine diphosphate but when thiamine arrives on the xerosal side of the intestine it is often in the free form the activated thiamine pyrophosphate is carried to the liver by the portal circulation 90% of the circulating thiamine is carried as thiamine pyrophosphate by erythrocytes while small amount exists as free thiamine and thiamine monophosphate which may be bound to albumin on the xerosal side of the intestine evidence have shown that discharge of the vitamin by those cells is dependent on sodium dependent atpase a specific binding protein called thiamine binding protein tbp has been identified in rat serum and is believed to be a hormone regulated carrier protein important for tissue distribution of thiamine uptake of thiamine by cells of the blood and other tissues occurs via active transport and passive diffusion the brain requires much more thiamine than other tissues of the body much of the ingested thiamine never reaches the brain because of passive diffusion and the blood brain barrier about 80% of intracellular thiamine is phosphorylated and most is bound to proteins in some tissues thiamine uptake and secretion appears to be mediated by a soluble thiamine transporter that is dependent on sodium and a transcellular proton gradient thiamine phosphorylation in many tissues is by specific kinases into the diphosphates and triphosphate esters these esters can be catabolized by a phosphorylase to yield thiamine monophosphate to summarize thiamine phosphate esters taken up from the food are hydrolyzed to thiamine in the small intestine transported as thiamine or thiamine monophosphate across the brush border membrane to the portal system and distributed to the various tissues now let us understand transportation utilization and metabolism three kinds of cell membrane thiamine transporters that may also transport thiamine monophosphate and thiamine diphosphate but not thiamine as such thiamine transport across cell membranes particularly the blood brain barrier is a relatively slow process the phosphorylation of thiamine occurs by two main enzymes 
thiamine diphosphokinase which catalyzes the formation of thiamine pyrophosphate using ATP and TTP ATP phosphoryl transferase which catalyzes the formation of thiamine triphosphate from TTP and ATP. Most of the thiamine within the body is TTP with the remainder thiamine monophosphate TMP. Storage There is no true thiamine storage reservoir in the body though because of its size and high thiamine diphosphate content the liver contains 10 to 20 percent of total body thiamine. Average human tissue stores of thiamine have been estimated at 25 to 30 milligram with high concentrations located in skeletal muscles. In case of reduced thiamine intake, it can be released from the liver and transported via the blood flow to other tissues. Human storage of thiamine is about 25 to 30 milligrams with the greatest concentration in skeletal muscle, heart, brain, liver and kidney. Thiamine monophosphate and free thiamine is present in plasma, milk, cerebrospinal fluid and it is presumed all extracellular fluids. Unlike the highly phosphorylated forms of thiamine, thiamine monophosphate and free thiamine are capable of crossing cell membranes. Thiamine contents in human tissues are less than those of other species. Excretions Thiamine is excreted both in urine and feces. Considerable fecal thiamine originates from microbial synthesis. Thiamine and its acid metabolites are excreted principally in the urine. Students, it would be a good idea to go through the factors influencing content and utilization of thiamine in foods as this information would supplement each other topic in the episode. Factors influencing content and utilization of thiamine in foods. Thiamine is water soluble and is susceptible to destruction by several factors including neutral and alkaline conditions, heat, oxidizing and reducing agents, ionizing radiation. Thiamine is stable at low pH but decomposes when heat particularly under non-acidic condition. Protein bound thiamine as found in animal tissues is more stable. Thiamine is stable when stored frozen. However, substantial losses occur during thawing. Losses of thiamine during the commercial baking of white bread which is between 15 to 20 percent is partly due to the yeast fermentation which can convert thiamine to co-carboxylase which is less stable than thiamine. Thiamine is very sensitive to sulfites and bisulfites especially at a high pH. Consequently, there are large losses of the vitamin in vegetables blanched with sulfite and in meat products where sulfites and bisulfites are used as preservatives. Where the pH is low, such as in citrus fruits juices, thiamine losses are considerably less. The practice of adding sodium bicarbonate to peas or beans for retention of their color in cooking or canning results in large losses of the vitamin due to the alkaline environment. Thiamine is also decomposed both by oxidizing and by reducing agents, example in the presence of copper ions. Thiamine is also cleaved by residual chlorine in proportion to the raise in temperature, rise in pH and concentration of residual chlorine. During the cooking process, thiamine in rice is lost because of residual chlorine in the cooking water. Using chlorinated water at cooking rice increases the loss of thiamine from the rice by 20%. Thiamine being water soluble vitamin gets lost when food is washed before cooking and also when cooked in large amount of water and it is drained off. Losses can be reduced when rice and vegetables are cooked in just sufficient water. Baking brings down 15 to 20 percent of loss and meat when roasted or broiled about 25 percent of thiamine is lost. Thiamine losses can be minimized in vegetables when 
cooked in sufficient water required without addition of cooking soda vegetables must be cooked for a shorter period and avoiding heating repeatedly to conserve thiamine anti thiamine factors thiamine in foods can be destroyed by anti thiamine compounds that occur naturally in foods are produced in food because of microbial or other action dietary analysis may indicate adequate intake of thiamine but do not take into consideration the influence of anti thiamine factors in the diet that may affect the requirement of the vitamin studies indicate that situations may exist where such factors may influence the availability of the thiamine in present in the food students let us sum up today's episode thiamine was first isolated from rice by joseph and donath in java in the year 1926 however the synthesis and structure of vitamin was accomplished in the year 1936 by dr r r williams thiamine is available commercially as thiamine hydrochloride This is a crystalline white powder which will have slight yeast like odor and salty taste. It is readily soluble in water. The vitamin is stable in dry form also when heated at 120 degrees centigrade in acidic medium. However, when foods are cooked in neutral or in alkaline medium, thiamine gets destroyed. The richest sources of thiamine include brewers yeast, liver and wheat germ. meat pork and organ meat are also rich source of thiamine dry bean peas soya bean peanuts are excellent source thiamine is released by the action of phosphatase and pyrophosphatase in the upper small intestine at low concentrations the process is carrier mediated and at high concentrations absorption occurs via passive diffusion Active transport is greatest in the jejunum and helium. Human storage of thiamine is about 25 to 30 mg with the greatest concentrations in skeleton, muscle, heart, brain, liver and kidneys. Thiamine is excreted principally in the urine. Student hope you have understood today's episode. Thank you very much.